freemmostation.com. Opponent after opponent had fallen at my feet, and the crowd worshipped me for it. I was soon invited to challenge the champion of Roskalot. The slavers told me that a victory here would secure my freedom. I had no reason to trust their word. But what other choice did I have? Hello, this is Dalen75 Games, and you are watching a first looks at Doom Warrior. What is Doom Warrior? The description from the website lists it as a brutal gladiator arena, massively multiplayer online RPG that's currently in open beta status. In the game, you can forge mighty weapons and armor of your own design, randomize loot with billions of potential finds, no limit to how powerful you can become, and you can take on gargantuan boss creatures. What you're watching here is the tutorial. What you see as soon as you create your character and start off your career as an arena gladiator. You'll find combat is quick and simple to grasp, yet takes patience and attention to the enemy's movements to win. Doom Warrior is, as it says, an RPG. It has stat increases of your choice to your gladiator when you level up, and there's a nice story to follow along as well. This character that you see right here is modeled after my own wife with her name as well. And I just did it to show you what it looks like when you start up a new character. This is after I got my main character to level 11. In the game, you, you fight both bots and human players, apparently, uh, though I'll elaborate on that later on. When you win, you can choose to spare or execute your fallen adversary, which will have an impact on the story as well as empowering your enemies to come back for revenge if you choose to kill them. Though since I chose to spare all but two at the beginning, I never had a chance to see the revenge part. When you are executed, you lose some gold and battle points, which are your score for ranking. There is a nudity option that you can toggle off or on right at the very beginning of the game. Uh, when checked, it basically just shows uh, women's breasts that you fight against. As for more nudity, well, there are slave girls that you can rent or purchase, and they do display the entire female anatomy. Outside of the matches in the story, there are various places on the map that pop up and allow you to either purchase gear or modify your gear in appearance and to socket them as well if they have an available slot, as well as uh, buying temporary buffs to help you in combat. Also, there are great big monsters to fight, though they will not help you accrue battle points. Instead, they grant you items and money. I only saw the one big red sand worm type of creature, and I lost fairly badly since it was pretty powerful compared to me. I will be showing that part uh, coming up soon. <laughs> there are numerous stats on your character to increase. Strength, toughness, agility, stamina, and blocking. Each stat has a very noticeable effect upon combat, which is a very good mix of twitch and stats working together. There are also other stats to help with your attacks and defenses. Customization of your equipment is pretty good, much better than I would have thought. Though there aren't a ton of options, there are enough that I wouldn't complain about it. Equipment is purchased with gold and other things uh, are purchased with gold as well. Dark stones are another form of currency in the game and they allow you to purchase various specific things such as customizing the looks of your items as well as being able to win or lose a dark stone in arena combat. The game guide is not currently out. So finding out specifics of game mechanics is a little difficult at the moment. There is what looks like a skull currency that is listed under your dark stone amount that I haven't been able to exactly figure out yet. Dark stones and the skull currency, which I assume has to do with your deaths, can both be paid for with real life money, though in the four hours I spent playing I never saw the need for it. I never saw the need for it, however that is just getting to level 11. Every level you gain, a new place to visit in the world map is spawned. Each place provides you with new ways to help you in arena combat. There is a ranking system that you can look at and even challenge people directly from within it. Within the Ashbridge Bronze League, which is where I left off, I was ranked number 6 out of 100 players. 
Beginning combat is exceedingly easy, making me think that they were bots. Okay, now to my opinion. Let's start with the negatives. All things considered, I found there to be few negatives with this game. One could arguably contest the graphics, which aren't, of course, top-notch. Based upon the reviewer, they would either greatly bemoan the mediocre graphics or accept them as just fine. Personally, I'd count myself in the latter category. Not really being able to see people's faces because of a mask or some kind of head covering is, of course, a little odd, but it's in the character of the game, and it's not something I noticed until writing these very words. This is the customization of my helmet that I purchased, and you want to make sure that it's an item worth using, not just some beginner item you're going to throw away. Each time you customize a uh, piece of equipment, you have to use dark stones, so you have to watch how much you spend. One thing that's very noticeable about the game right away is that there are a limited number of attacks and defenses that for me, since I'm just starting out, aren't a big deal, but I'm pretty sure if I was to play the game a lot more that they would get pretty tiresome. There is only one left and right, as well as an overhead and low block as well as a strike from the left or right, overhead, and a low stab. That's it. Except for the fact that there are some magical attacks that you can use whenever you choose during the battle, but they're very limited, like maybe once or twice. Um, you get one item and you can only use it once, and I think there's a limited number of items you can have, like three or four. And f f as far as I've seen, none of them do a terrible amount of damage, so it's not overpowering. It's basically all swords and axes and shields. Now here's the monster fight that I came in to do, and this, these are the attacks it has on the right <laughs> its stats that I went over. They're pretty powerful compared to me, but uh, I wanted to try it anyways, at least just for the video, to see how it would go. Um, it, it wasn't like I died in 10 seconds, but I, I tried to fight and hold on as long as I could based on what I knew and how to play the game. Uh, it's about four levels above me, but it's, it's just way tough. And I couldn't really tell what its attacks were doing to me. So back to the criticisms of the game. Uh, there's a lot of combat and stat boosting items that you can use to help perform better during the fight. Again, whenever you choose, but it makes no sense not to start out with them because they seem to last the entire fight, so why not? Judging by how people initiate the strike against you is something you can learn to counter. However, going up against a monster throws that all out the window since they wouldn't give the same tell, which is very important to winning fights. Now, one of the major cr criticisms of the game, and this could be just because it's currently in beta, is... I understood how to begin combat with other players, but I didn't understand why I was never challenged myself by other players. It's a little odd because my ranking in the end was fairly high. A little digging informed me that the game is in fact pitting you just against bots at the moment. I think that later on you will go one to one against other players, but what they do right now is make a copy of your character and pit it against other players to fight. Uh, it's still in beta, but I can imagine that when it's real PvP that the game will be even better than it is. As it was, I sort of thought I was fighting against real people, uh, at least when I got to higher levels and they seem to be more intuitive. The AI is not that bad, it's actually pretty good in that it will make mistakes at times and at other times it will be brutally hard. Uh, just like how I would figure it would be to fight against a live person, so that had me a little confused. So all in all, that's not really too bad of the game. Let's get on to the positives. What I thought would be a simple and easy game turned out to be a bit of addicting for myself. I planned to only play for two hours, but ended up pulling away after only four. <laughs> Though seemingly simple, combat takes patience, attention to the enemy's moves, luck, and good equipment to win. Even if you correctly block an attack, like especially the overhead attack right here, which can be very damaging, um, there is a small chance that your block will not be successful. And I think that's based either on your block stat or pitting your block stat against their strength stat. I'm not positive on that one. It seemed like around level 10, I had thought that I was fighting other players constantly, and I think that was just because the difficulty was ramped up. The first 10 levels I encountered way too many easy fights, so it was kind of laughable. I didn't even lose the first fight until level 8, which is about 30 or so fights into the game. Either way, it was a bit jarring when suddenly being pitted against skilled and much better equipped players. 
Still fairly early in the game, here's one of the videos that I was presented with. I think that's pretty neat. Upon being granted my freedom, my thoughts turned to my homeland. I had become weary of the unforgiving heat and the endless expanse of sand. I sought passage on the first vessel north. The journey was uneventful save the vicious nightmares which continued to torment my slumber. Some strange voice was whispering to me from beyond the edge of understanding. Visions of carnage, of slaughter, and of suffering filled my mind's eye. As I arrived in the town of Ashbridge, I instantly felt drawn to the wilderness beyond. Wandering through the darkness, I stumbled upon a strange set of graves. Other warriors had gathered here, standing motionless in the moonlight. A drum began to beat within the depths of my soul. An urge to prove myself on this hallowed ground was beyond reckoning. In this fight, I go up against a female gladiator, and the nudity is turned off, and I can understand that uh, putting it on a YouTube channel is different than playing by yourself. I don't personally mind the nudity, but uh, actually, I like it better with the a little bit of clothing on. It leaves a little bit to the imagination. Before combat, it really helps to look at the stats of the enemy you're about to fight, so you can judge what they're really good at and what you can be prepared to be facing. There are various stats to increase through leveling up with equipment. It makes the game much more customizable since you won't be up against the same thing all the time. You can also counter certain attacks such as lightning or poison with resistance gear. Here are the slave girls you can purchase and they provide you with stat boosts. I think it's permanent if you purchase them as opposed to just renting them. When I first ran into someone employing poison, I was in for a bit of a surprise since after I was hit my health bar turned green and my health slowly leaked away for a certain number of seconds. I once ran into a female character who was completely geared for offense as well as having poisoned weapons. Well, I thought if I could just block her attacks I should be fine. What happened was that her attacks would take out one third of my health in one overhand swing. Uh, needless to say I didn't live very long. <laughs> At one point, I challenged someone around rank 6 when I was rank 10, and through a long combat, I eventually prevailed, but it was a darn good fight. I found it a little odd that the first couple losses I experienced ended up with me being spared, but about the next 6-8 to eight losses ended up with my character being executed, one of which showed a full decapitation of my character. One nice thing is if you lose enough, you will be pitted against lesser ranked players, and if you win a lot, then they put you up against people quite a few levels higher than you. Which for me, at one point I was facing a level 19 player when I was only level 11. Surprisingly, I found myself good at the game, much better than I would have guessed, but the challenge ranks up later on. In this fight here that I'm losing quite badly, I went up against the local champion that you need to defeat in order to continue the story. And as you can see, he does a execution at the end. I very much enjoyed the atmosphere of the game, simply because they put in a storyline. That and the fact that you can also buy or somehow get a home in the game, and from that you can bring various things to that home. I am sure if I had continued leveling my gladiator that other options would come into play such as gems or whatever they may be to socket certain equipment. That and possibly things I just wouldn't have seen coming if I didn't try to buy a slave girl that told me I needed a home or stronghold to bring them to, which is sort of a nice feature because the game really expands on you and you never know what is around the corner. Bottom line. I felt that there was more of a game going on beyond a simple arena combat game, which to me is the difference between a good game and a game I would pass on. Surprisingly, I would recommend this game to anyone interested in an arena type setting, since it is an arena game and so much more. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to check out my channel, Dalen75Games.